a very good morning to one and all today i am going to discuss with the topic spinal injuries let me introduce the topic spinal cord injury is a low incident disease high cost disability is there requiring tremendous changes in individuals lifestyle 40% of trauma patients with neuro deficits will have permanent or temporary spinal cord injury most common injury as at uh, cervical level so comparing to other diseases uh, spinal cord injury is a very low incidence disease okay so uh, in a very rare condition spinal cord injury is occurring and if it is happen and it is a high cost disability okay so the loss which is happen uh, to the patient is not able to uh, adjust with any of the uh, management then it required a tremendous change in individual's lifestyle because uh, you, you may uh, study that the spinal cord that is a, uh, one of the main part of your uh, brain uh, which helps for the uh, nerve supply and all so if there is any damage in the spinal cord it can lead to uh, some uh, loss of ability or some dysfunction so they have to uh, uh, they have to make some uh, a lot of changes they have to make in their lifestyle and 40% of trauma patients with neuro deficit will have permanent or temporary spinal cord injury so those who are uh, suffering or those who are met with head injury or uh, head trauma most of them are 40% of people are having spinal cord injuries then most common injury is at the level of cervical level that means in the neck behind the neck region so there the most common injury is occurring let us see this is a spinal cord a part of the spinal cord so there you can see now front sensory information of front and a friend is going then gray matter is there then uh, dorsal root then white matter you can see then spinal now so if uh, through each uh, uh, spinal vertebrae the uh, spinal nerve is attached then we can see in that we are having uh, spinal uh, uh, spinal nerves that means eight uh, cervical nerve, 12 thoracic nerve, then uh, five lumbar nerve and five sacral nerve. Okay, this will help to control our uh, body functions. Okay, and in which all area that also you are studying in anatomy and physiology in the first year. So let us move forward. Definition, it is a trauma to the spinal cord that results either temporary or permanent in changes in its motor sensory function autonomic function so uh, spinal cord injury means it is a trauma to the spinal cord okay? if there is any injury or trauma occurring to the spinal cord that results either temporary or permanent change in its motor sensory function autonomic function so due to the uh, injury occurring to the spinal cord if that injury can make any temporary or permanent changes in a patient's motor that means movement sensory function uh, that later with stimulus and autonomic function your body is having like a bowel and bladder control uh, then heart rate then respiratory rate so this all are autonomic function so if there is any deterioration is happening to this autonomic function uh, or example uh, peristalsis that is also autonomic function we can't able to make any changes so any changes happening in these three areas either it is a permanent or temporary that we can call it as spinal cord injury okay understood let us see the incidence. Spinal cord injury is highest among person age 16 to 30 in whom 53.1% of injuries. Okay? So commonly it is seen in uh, age group of 16 to 30. Male represent 81.2% of all reporters and 89.8% of all sport related uh, spinal cord injury. So male people are more uh, risk for spinal cord injury because of the increased activity. And especially it is seen in 18, 16 to 30 years of age. And most of the 89% of this spinal cord injury is related with sports. Okay. Then among both genders, auto accident, falls and gunshot are the three leading causes of uh, spinal cord injury. Okay. Mainly, uh, in if you're comparing with both male and female, this is the uh, incidence is mainly occurring due to uh, auto accidents, automobile accidents like car or bike accident, falls, if you are falling from a particular uh, height, then gunshot, okay, due to some social uh, conflicts, okay. Then sports and recreation related uh, spinal cord injuries primarily affect people under age 29. So age uh, 30, 35 will be the maximum limit for uh, uh, people, those who are participating in sports activities. So mainly it is occurring below 30 years of people, okay. This is the incidence. 
let us see the causes mainly traumatic and non traumatic so let us see what is the non traumatic causes it including degeneration inflammation then vascular causes are there congenital and neoplasm so these are the main non traumatic okay without any injury these are the or trauma these are the uh, causes which can lead to spinal cord injury traumatic means motor vehicle crashes act of violence falls sporting accidents and other so this a direct impact will be there then mechanism of spinal cord injury so first one is hyperextension second one is hyperflexion if you are extended your neck or your spinal vertebrae is more extended if more flexed okay then uh, other the other than this one vertical compression okay if you are directly vertically if you are falling or you are compressing with something then hyperflexion okay so these are the uh, main uh, mechanism or uh, the uh, main uh, uh, common uh, mechanism which can lead to spinal cord injury then types it including complete and incomplete mainly two types are there a complete spinal cord injury causes permanent damage to the area of the spinal cord that is affected paraplegia or tetraplegia are result of complete spinal cord injuries complete spinal cord injury means there is a permanent damage is occurring on the spinal cord okay and that can lead to paraplegia or uh, tetraplegia okay four uh, limb or uh, uh, two limbs will getting Uh, or two parts uh, parts of the body will get paralysis then a complete injury is indicated by a total loss of sensory and motor function below the level of injury so for example if it is happening the cervical uh, um, vertebrae then uh, below the cervical area what are the functions controlling by thoracic and lumbar and sacral will be affecting okay then incomplete spinal cord injuries an incomplete injury means that the ability of the spinal cord to convey messages to or from the brain is not completely lost okay some kind of uh, functions are there okay completely it is not uh, uh, stopped or it is not lost some kind of informations will be there so but people will having more disabilities additionally some sensation uh, even its faint and movement is possible below the level of injury so in this incomplete uh, spinal cord injury below the level of the injury also some kind of functions will be remaining okay then uh, incomplete spinal cord injuries including central cord syndrome anterior cord syndrome posterior cord syndrome brown sequard syndrome coda equina syndrome and conus medullaris syndrome so these are the uh, types of incomplete spinal cord injury we will see one by one first of all central cord syndrome okay central cord syndrome means it is the most common form of cervical spinal cord injury it is characterized by loss of motion and sensation in arms and hands due to trauma on central cortico spinal tract of the spinal cord so central cord sim, uh, syndrome means that is the most common uh, uh, cervical spinal cord injury okay so uh, it's mainly occurring on the cervical spine and it is characterized by loss of motion and sensation in arms and hand okay Uh, mainly it is affecting the arms and hands okay uh, both arms and hands will be affected due to trauma on central cortico spinal tract of the spinal cord so the trauma is mainly occurring on the so you can see in that uh, that uh, that uh, violet color that is uh, uh, trauma traumatic area of the spinal cord so central part of the uh, uh, spinal cord is getting trauma so the arms and hands will be affected brown sequard cord syndrome brown sequard cord syndrome is a rare neurological condition characterized by a lesion in the spinal cord which result in weakness or paralysis okay so by brown sequard syndrome means it's a rare okay uh, rare condition neurological condition where uh, it is characterized by a lesion okay there is a lesion is occurring on the spinal cord which can lead to weakness or paralysis hemiparaplegia or hemi anesthesia okay hemiparaplegia means one Uh, side of the body and a loss of sensation one side of the body you can see in that picture one side of the body will get loss of sensation and hemi anesthesia means on the opposite side okay so uh, one side of the body will completely uh, lose the uh, sensation and opposite side will lose pain temperature light touch and opposite uh, light touch okay so this all happening okay in brown sequard syndrome then next one anterior cord syndrome anterior uh, spinal cord syndrome involves complete motor paralysis and loss of temperature and pain perception distal to the lesion okay so in the picture you can see in that so in anterior spinal cord syndrome involves complete motor paralysis okay complete movement disorder will be the complete loss of movement okay including 
loss of temperature okay temperature sensation also will loss and per uh, pain perception they can't able to identify the pain stimulus this syndrome is caused by compression of the anterior spinal artery this is mainly occurring due to any compression of the due to the trauma or injury any compression is occurring in the anterior spinal artery that in this particular problem will occur which result in anterior cord ischemia or direct compression of the anterior cord okay so when the anterior cord uh, anterior uh, spinal artery is getting compressed it can lead to ischemia of the anterior cord or uh, compression of the anterior cord then next one posterior cord syndrome posterior cord syndrome also known as posterior spinal artery syndrome is a type of incomplete spinal cord injury okay so posterior, posterior cord syndrome means posterior spinal artery syndrome the other name is posterior spinal artery syndrome and it is a type of incomplete spinal cord injury this lesions can be caused by trauma to the neck occlusion of the spinal artery tumor discompression vitamin b12 deficiency syphilis or multiple sclerosis so this particular syndrome is occurring there is a group of disorder you can see in that mainly due to any trauma to the neck or in the cervical region occlusion of the spinal artery if the spinal artery is getting occluded tumor any tumor or uh, growth then discompression vitamin b12 deficiency syphilis or multiple sclerosis these are the possible causes which can lead to posterior cord syndrome then coda equina syndrome coda equina syndrome is a condition that occurs when the bundle of nerves below the end of the spinal cord known as the coda equina is damaged so coda equina means it is a bundle of nerve which is seen in the uh, below the end of spinal cord okay that in the cosical or sacral and cosical region you can see in a uh, bundle of nerves uh, that is called coda equina so if it is damaged that time this particular condition is occurring signs and symptoms including uh, that uh, radius uh, include uh, leg numbness uh, leg uh, down the leg, radius around the leg then uh, numbness around the anus and loss of bowel or bladder control these are the main signs or symptoms behind coda equina syndrome then conus medullaris syndrome it is a type of incomplete spinal cord injury that is less likely to cause paralysis than many other type of spinal cord injuries okay so in this uh, condition conus medullaris it is also incomplete spinal cord injury and it is less likely to cause paralysis okay very rarely paralysis is occurring but there are many types of spinal cord uh, than many other type of spinal cord very uh, rarely uh, paralysis is occurring than other type of spinal cord uh, injuries instead the most common symptoms are severe back pain instead of paralysis the person will having severe back pain strange or jarring sensation in the back okay uh, such as buzzing tingling or numbness okay uh, other than this paralysis they are very rarely getting paralysis but they are having severe back pain will be there then pain sensation or jarring sensation in the back okay such as buzzing tingling or numbness sensation will be on the back then uh, types based on level of injury according to the level of injury uh, the cervical injury it's about 40 percent is occurring in cervical thoracic injury only 10 percentage lumbar injury where uh, very rare it is the three percent only dorsal lumbar or the end part of the lumbar region l4 l5 it is 35 percentage and uh, other injuries are 14 percentage pathophysiology uh, in this spinal cord insult due to etiology due to any etiological factor spinal cord trauma is occurring that can lead to primary injury impact with persisting compression so first of all what is happening after the trauma a compression is occurring on the spinal cord cell damage laceration due to compression so due to the compression spinal nerve cells is getting damaged and laceration is occurring then uh, it can lead to local microcirculatory damage okay so local microcirculatory means the local uh, blood circulation will get damaged due to capillary damage that can lead to thrombosis okay so due to this micro uh, or loss of micro uh, circulatory damage or loss of local blood supply it can lead to thrombosis profound hypotension and bradycardia will be occurring then it will lead to secondary injury or systemic changes so first the primary uh, injury uh, occurring and due to the impact of the primary injury a secondary injury or systemic changes okay the from there only is a systemic or the nerves will be getting involved so the person will having some uh, loss of motor function or sensation in parts of the body biochemical changes due to 
Excitic toxin release. Uh, we have seen that excitic uh, nerve are there. So uh, excitic uh, toxin release, free radical production, electrolytes and cytokine shift. A okay? lot of inflammatory reaction will be occurring on the uh, spinal cord can lead to vasospasm and endothelial swelling. Okay? So then it will lead to vasospasm or uh, there is some uh, uh, vessel, blood vessel spasm will be occurring or proper circulation will be not occurring and endothelial swelling will be there that can lead to local and systemic effect. Either local effect like back pain, tingling, numbness and uh, systemic effect like uh, to where the nerve is supplying that area will having deficiency in motor and sensory and autonomic function. So this is the other physiology. Next is signs and symptoms. Numbness or tingling in the extremities. Uh, main signs and symptoms then headache will be there breathing difficulty then uh, lethargy then pain pressure pain pressure and stiffness in the back of the or neck area then changes in consciousness these are the main signs and symptoms you can see in uh, spinal cord injury there will be numbness or tingling sensation in the extremities because the nerves which is uh, supplying towards the area then headache will be there patient is having breathing difficulty because respiratory distress will be there lethargy always feeling tiredness pain or pressure and stiffness in the back or neck area changes in consciousness okay, in between there's a chance of loss of consciousness and all then uh, paralysis that is also a uh, condition which occurring in spinal cord injury it is a state of loss of motor and sensory function that we can call it as paralysis types of paralysis are monoplegia diplegia Monoplegia means uh, only one uh, arms or extremity is getting affected. Diplegia means both. Hemiplegia means half of the body. Paraplegia means uh, both uh, once uh, both uh, extremity one extremity and one uh, lower and upper extremity. Then inverse paraplegia, then tetraplegia or four limbs are affecting. So here you can see in the cervical uh, thoracic lumbar and sacral and procedural area what are the uh, cervical means tetraplegia will be there then uh, only uh, C6 means uh, tetraplegia but neck uh, function will be there T6 means paraplegia will be there okay uh, upper limbs are, uh, are uh, uh, um, responding to the stimuli lower extremities will be affected then uh, L1 or lumbar region means and the lower extremity is upper affected, upper is uh, functioning. Then what are the diagnostic evaluation? It including history collection, then physical examination, complete a neurological examination should be done, then complete blood count and urine test, then spine x-ray to identify the area where uh, injury happened, then CT and MRA, it will help to evaluate the severity of the injury and myelography, it will help to study the muscle fibers and also the uh, uh, functions of the nerve fibers okay so these are the diagnostic evaluation we are doing for spinal cord injury so management i will take on the next class so please go through the topic uh, uh, any doubt means you can ask to me have a nice day thank you